old timers would say. Good thing this rain ain't all snow. We'd be bucked. Just like that, winter. How you guys doing? Sometimes you just, uh, life gets away from you and you got a lot of stuff going on. And then you just don't, uh, you don't turn the camera on, you know, it's what happens. It's still warm out, 40 degrees. Been lucky so far, a lot of rain. But uh, yeah, it's warm. Warm up here in Maine. Only got a little bit of snow, but it all melted. I got a little treat for you today. Hash browns dumped out in the bag. You gotta get the hash browns, but. Oh, stale today. Well, it happens sometimes. We got a little treat today from the normal. And uh, this is the first time for me. I have not got these yet. But... Instead of the normal wake-up wraps, which is like a little tortilla, a little taco, look what they've done. Pancake wraps. What a world we live in. What a wonderful world, right? Well, you can either get bacon, you know, or egg and cheese, or you can get sausage, and of course I got that. You got your little patty cut in half. Egg patty cut in half. That melty, salted orange cheese in there. And it, it's got a little pancake. A little pancake. Oh. Come on, life ain't so bad. You gotta enjoy the little things. Look at that. Look at that cheese. Can you see it? Oh, I forgot. They were supposed to give me something else to complete this. Look at this. Mrs. Buttersworth. A little bit of syrup there to dip it in. I tell you. I don't know what more you could ask for. Now, uh, they're not giving these things away. Look at that. Huh. A little syrup to dip it in. They should pay me for making these videos. Dunkin' Donuts, I mean. Or Dunkin', that was called now. I got two of these, a hash brown, and an iced coffee. I gave a $20 bill, and uh, I got back a five, a one, and a few coins, so you figure it out. It ain't cheap to eat out, I can tell you that. Things are not cheap.
cold. Cold hash browns. Not good. Lose points with me, but it's okay. These pancake wraps are good enough. Make up for it. Oh my god, lots of stuff's went on. We've got a lot of talking to do. Maybe not today, but it's a rainy day. You know, getting rid of some junk. Lots of stuff. New trailer to talk about. Wow. A lot of good things. A lot of junk cars come and gone. Almost Christmas. You gotta get your Christmas shot. Oh man, what happened here? Look at this. Oh, a little sausage patty fell out. <laughs> Just sitting in there. We'll have to reassemble. Okay, we're good. We fixed it. A lot of junk cars. Uh, prices went down and they came up a little bit. Not too bad, but light iron and stuff still really low. But, you know, local shop here, um, I got rid of a lot of junk for them, a lot of vehicles, stuff like that, bought some, and, um, the guy came to me and said, hey, you know, years ago, my son's car got all messed up, and we pushed it all the way up back, way, way in the back in the woods. And uh, been sitting up there many years. Didn't really remember what it was. Nissan Altima, he said it might be. He said, you know, I just want to give the thing away. I just want to get rid of it, you know. And I said, well, I said, it probably doesn't have cats on it, right? He said, oh, no. Those were taken off a long time ago. I said, well, not a lot of value there. But, he said, the only thing is, I can't find the title. Well, he thought it was a lot newer than it actually is. So I went up. And I drove back there one day. Uh, actually, I took the old farm truck and I almost got stuck, but. Um, I climbed up on there. I was missing the hood and uh, missing one front wheel. It's all smashed up, all the glass smashed out of it. I'm sitting there for a long time, vines growing through it. And uh, climbed up on there, got the VIN number, and figured out that it was actually a 2000 Nissan Maxima, which means it don't need a title. So I said to him, well, actually, I didn't say anything to him. Then I got really, really busy. And I mean, whole trailer situation, that's something we got to talk about, but things were just crazy. I switched trailers and it was non-stop, hauling, 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 all kinds of stuff going on before the winter. 
people wanting to get rid of stuff. So I seen them and uh, I said, listen, I said, the good news is I don't need the title for that. I can get rid of it for you. Oh, okay. That's great. I said, the bad news is, I said, I ain't going to get my trailer backed up up in there. There's nowhere to turn around. I mean, you basically, it's a glorified, like, ATV trail that leads to it. I said, if you can get it pulled out of there, down where I can get to it. I'll get it. Get it on the trailer. He said, oh, that's no problem. He said, that's it. He said, I can, I'll pull it out of there. And, uh, no problem at all. I said, you know, the things, it's stuck in park. It's got no key. The steering wheel's locked. It's got no front wheel. The other tires flat so figure it's one of those things where probably won't hear anything about it. it he probably won't get to it it'll snow and that'll be it for the winter but to my surprise the local guy a couple hours later, he came right over to my house, pulled right in the driveway, and said, hey, that car's all set for you. Really? Yep. Pulled it right out. He said, if you need any other help getting it on, just let me know. Okay. So, hooked up the trailer, went over there. So, it's more of like, you know... <coughs> <coughs> Last hash brown <clears throat> down the wrong pipe. Uh, excuse me. So, sometimes you got to do things even though you don't, you know, make a lot of money. We've talked about that. <clears throat> and keep someone happy for the future, you know. Get rid of something for somebody even though you're not going to make a lot of money. So, I figure, well, I will get the car because I got a couple other pickups in town from shops, you know, their basic scrap, rotors, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I like to get something like this where I can just drive around and throw the stuff in, fill it up, make it way more. So it's like a hundred a ton, I think, for uh, vehicle bodies right now. So, anyway, I go over there, and uh, with this new trailer, oh my God, you got the, it's 18 by 7, I mean, it's wider, it's longer, it's got the little beaver tail at the back, and uh, what a setup, I mean, what I wanted for years, what I dreamt about having. Um, <clears throat> So, I just jacked up the front of the car a little bit and uh, hooked the winch to it and just pulled it. I didn't even put the ramp, so. So, I get it up on there and uh, a little messing around, you know, change the cable to one side, you know, pull it here, pull it there. But with that flat, with that totally flat diamond plate, just slides right on. You don't even need wheels, nothing. So... I, I come to realize that it's actually a Maxima, and uh, it's got the 3.0 V6 in it. So I looked under the car, and the whole exhaust is gone. I mean, every bit of exhaust I can see is totally missing. But then, up front, I get under there to uh, look for a good spot in the middle to hook the chain to. And guess what? They thought they got all the cats off of there, but... Meow. You forgot one, and those are the bonuses of the job. And there was that little tiny manifold cat right on the front 
coming right off the front bank of the motor and uh, there would have been I believe three on that one more at the back of the motor which was gone and then one downstream underneath the car so <clears throat> I said well there you go right there there's a bonus also the car still had three of its original aluminum wheels so that's extra money right there that's uh, $12 a piece with the tire on it the cat don't know gotta wait could be 60 bucks could be 200 uh, could be more don't know it's always a gamble but free totally free so either they didn't know their mechanics I mean either they didn't know it was a cat or they just forgot it so anyway <clears throat> nice little bonus for me <clears throat> Also, this trailer is so nice because it's all it's not open in the middle. Just throw a jack up there, jack it up, lay under there, cut cats, do whatever you want. Pretty nice. So I got it back home. The weird thing was, I got out my, those have like a big round flange, got like six bolts, I think. And usually... No matter how old and rusty those come out or they break which is fine too and then that separates from that front manifold um, very easy to get off so I get under there and I go you know take my impact with my adapter and put a nice chrome uh, 13 mil socket on the old impact with an extension hit it wing comes right off well, then I kind of hit hit the cat with my head a little bit as I was moving around, and the thing's going like this. All the bolts were loose. They were in there finger tight. But the O2 sensor was still on, hooked up, everything. And, uh, you know, that tells me, ooh, that's not good. Maybe uh, they took it off and gutted it or thought that, you know, it was clogged or something like that. You see that a lot. So, took the other ones off with just by hand with the extension up there. Took the bolts off, cut the wire for the O2, took it down, totally full, full cat on there. So, I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but good news for me. I uh, went over to uh, another place and they had just, that's a place I, a shop I pick up metal and they had just cleaned the shop out. They had buckets of bearings and, and all kinds of steel uh, steering boxes and stuff. Threw that all in the car, went to another shop, threw all he was happy, cleaned up his scrap, threw it all in the car and uh you see that Napa little box? It's, uh, you put your wire and your tubing in there. Like, they would have that in the back of the store. If you wanted a section, you pull it out, you cut your piece, you know. Nice. I don't know where I got that a while ago. I gave it to this guy that's got a shop now. He does a lot of wiring and lines and stuff. So I figured, great, right? You know, here you go. You can have this set in your shop. Nice little thing sometimes. You don't give stuff to people, they remember you, and uh, you get a good deal down the road. Well, guy threw it on the ground and tells me, take this to, uh, I don't need this. Real nice, huh? Real nice, you try to be nice, give someone something, but there, there you go, that's what you get. So that's in the car, and, uh, and also, the uh, local tractor supply store, uh, they call me now and have me pick up a bunch of scrap and stuff that they get. And sometimes, uh, like this lady, the manager called me and said, you know, the company that makes these pellet stoves, uh, a lot of them were returned. They're defective. They're broken, whatever. Uh, they told us to rip the motherboards out and call a scrap metal dealer so they called me and I went over and picked them up well 
I thought they were like brand new, just they said they were defective, like one of those deals, but uh, they had them all wrapped in plastic on a pallet, and uh, I unwrapped them, and turns out they've all been fired up, somebody has returned them, and there's still pellets in there, and uh, they're, they're, you can clearly tell that they've, you know, been lit up and stuff, um, so <clears throat> I put them aside till I had, you know, a run to go down, because I knew that you could fit a car on this trailer, plus you could fit more stuff so much room for activities but uh then a guy calls me and he went over to tractor supply because he turns out he's the one who had been returning a couple of these stoves and uh the company the manufacturer won't work with them under warranty and now he needs uh one of the little fan motors inside <clears throat> they want all the money for him and uh He's like, you know, the guy over there said that you pick up the stuff. I was just wondering by chance if you still had any or any parts. I said, yeah, they're sitting right here. So he came over and uh, he took out this little motor in two seconds that he needed to get his house up and going, the heat and everything going. He gave me 25 bucks for the little motor. Was happy as hell. Said he might buy a whole one. Ended up calling you know the next day saying thanks for the help I, I'm uh, I don't need a, a whole one I decided not to and uh, I'm gonna go a different route probably buy a different pellet stove eventually so anyway helped that guy out got his heat going 25 bucks and uh, got those on the trailer a little extra a little extra light iron Pancake wraps, iced coffee, the rain's slowing down. Hopefully it slows down when I have to get out and unhook all this crap. And we'll see what we get. Why not? So, <clears throat> we pulled in there, we were a lot drier, for sure, but uh, pulled on the scale, it was right around 14,000 pounds with everything, for some reason uh, didn't give me the slip for the car weight, but I sent him a message to see, um, what it was and uh, it was just over 4,000 pounds on that car so that was pretty good because that car wouldn't have weighed near that um, from the factory so anyway uh, that brought it's a hundred a ton and all you got to do is um, drain the coolant so that thing had a busted radiator for years, so uh, there was no cooling in that. So it was all set there. Um, so $201 just for that car body. And then we uh, pulled back on the scale and we uh, says $99.40. Uh, we dropped off those pellet stoves. 620 pounds we weighed out at 93.20 so truck and trailer with me in it empty is that's what it is but 93.20 so um, $15.50 for three pellet stoves and those things are I mean well 620 pounds but they feel pretty heavy to me moving them around so there you go if you're wondering what uh, scrap metal 
is worth three pellet stoves, 15 bucks. But got to get rid of them. Got to do what they say. Get rid of them for the guys, for the for the man. But um, that one bonus little kitty cat on there that they forgot about. Hundred and twenty dollars. You see right there, that makes the difference. Makes for a much nicer day. And uh, three aluminum wheels with tires at twelve dollars a piece, thirty-six dollars, and one lonely battery I got out of the scrap pile, five dollars. So one hundred and sixty-one dollars there. So, damn near 400 bucks on the whole deal, and uh, not too bad, I'd say. Now we go spend it. Drive that Lincoln right up on there, boy. <laughs> Meow. Just like that, the day is over. It's dark out. Four o'clock. Got some Christmas shopping done. Christmas. Well, it's, uh, it's near supper time, but you know, I just can't survive without stopping. Need a little snack. I want you to look at these uh, bacon pub fries, Wendy's. Look at this. Those are actual slices of bacon on there. We got... I don't know why I got the spoon. Uh, they got that cheese sauce and then melted cheddar on top of that. The natural cut fries. Look at that. Oh man. Let's open up the chili and see how it looks, how hot it is. Well, I can tell you what, it's hot. I can hardly hold it. Consistency, it's perfect. Oh man. Good end to the day. A little bit wet, but this will dry you up. What do we got here? A little snack here. A little uh, crispy chicken BLT. Ooh. These are underrated, you know. You get it's only a couple dollars, and uh, look at this. get like a, that fried chicken patty they put a 
a slice of cheese and that there's that real you know like real bacon real strips a little piece of lettuce on there for good measure tomato some mayo little little delightful BLT dark got the lights dome lights are on I don't know There you go. A little signature lemonade. Can't go wrong. No. Fifty one degrees, it says. Like a summer day. Bacon. Well, thanks for hanging in there as long as you did. More videos to come. Talk about things, garage updates, trailer updates, everything. Couple new items, some scores here and there. Got to catch up. So uh, grab a drink soon, huh? No. Maybe we'll hang out. Maybe we won't have time. See. See what happens. might take a look you know you're walking around or you know you're up there at the, the corner store take a look you might see something it might be me looking at you on the streets